Wasteland 2 starts with a nicely fitting, gritty live action sequence in which our heroes, or complete mass murderers depending on your perspective, are introduced. The Desert Rangers. Wasteland 2 is a post-apocalyptic role-playing game and the official sequel to the first Wasteland game from 1988. And in many ways it certainly plays like a classic. Wasteland 2 is an incredibly slow and fiddly game. It starts off on a slow burner and yet I've spent more than 70 hours on what I ultimately found to be a very compelling and gripping RPG. In Wasteland 2 you play as a squad of up to 7 characters, four of which you can design from the ground up. During character creation it will become immediately clear as to what Wasteland 2 is all about, role-playing your characters. Most importantly you have to decide what your rangers are good at and building a diverse specialized party is often incredibly important as every little skill has its uses. Make sure you always have a surgeon with you on that note. Furthermore you're asked to shape the backgrounds of your party members even though this has no actual gameplay effects. This focus on roleplaying is an important point to drive home. Wasteland 2 is first and foremost designed around making a story for your characters and strikes a lot of similarities to tabletop games. Skill checks can critically fail, causing you to trigger alarms, completely block off access to a vault, or you can even end up having party members permanently die in combat. It all adds to your party's story. Every choice you make should be considered, because Wasteland 2 is an unforgiving game. Wasteland 2 then absolutely hits the mark when it comes to its role-playing aspect and story. Your choices have very real consequences, and you can see them play out before you. This is quickly noticeable in one of your very first missions, in which it asks you to save one of two different outposts, stating that choosing one likely means the downfall of the other. Your choice then results in a different mission, a different optional companion, and NPCs will react to the choice you've made. Not to mention hearing the sounds of the stress over your radio, as the other area falls to horrific enemy forces. Most of the story is relayed to you through heaps of well-written text, and voice acting is minimal. But where it is used, such as your radio conversations, it is put to good use and fits the setting and atmosphere well. The end result is an excellently written game that properly captures the harsh and realistic post-apocalyptic universe. That being said, the design choice to make skill checks highly random can often cause frustration. Even when you have the respective skill maxed out, your characters can still mess up with potentially bad consequences. You have to accept that solving a skill check is not completely up to you, and this lack of direct control can certainly be an annoyance. Furthermore, skill checks can sometimes be oddly graded, where seemingly similar skill checks suddenly become far more difficult, even though they are in the same area and often don't even guard anything more important. Numerous doors in the same complex can easily range from easy all the way to hard. The way these skill checks are implemented can make the game feel unfair and left to chance. So playing Wasteland 2 as a completionist, saving before every skill check and relentlessly retrying them over and over, will then only serve to water down the experience and slow down Wasteland 2 even more. It is this slow pace that is heavily indicative of the biggest flaws of Wasteland 2. The game plays out in two main areas, and the difference in mission and map design between these two areas is quite vast. The first 10 to 20 hours are spent on simple missions that can drag on for far too long and aren't particularly creative as you continuously clear out caves of insects and mutated animals which offer very little in the way of combat challenge or story and can take far too much damage on the default difficulty. Map design too is significantly worse in the first sections of the game with rather dull, straightforward layouts. Zones and locations focused on curious side quests and town interaction only start showing up after you've spent a good deal of time on the more tedious early parts of the game. These much superior zones then feature excellent writing, plenty of weird side quests and main quests about a wide array of different cults and can play out in a number of different ways but it does require you to invest a lot of time into Wasteland 2 in the first place. This slow pace shows itself yet again in the way you control your characters through the user interface, and this is where Wasteland 2 can become unnecessarily fiddly. Say you want to open a locked door. First you select your designated thief, who likely is the only character that can open locks in the first place, you then select the skill on your toolbar, and finally you select the locked door. In case of a failed attempt you then repeat this process until you finally succeed. 
certainly that's easy enough to do and no problem the first 20 or so times, but as most zones are absolutely littered with locked boxes, you're looking to do these simple interactions which are the same for every single skill hundreds of times. It certainly adds up. Likewise, similar user interface aspects such as the trading window could do with improvement as comparing weaponry is a slow process, requiring you to back out of the entire trading tab every time you want to look at your secondary weapon. The map for every zone you enter is yet another one of these fiddly aspects. Finding common things like a, a store can be quite the hassle and in general the maps are rather poor. None of these are major issues by any means, but they serve to add to the slow nature of Wasteland 2 and make it a rougher diamond than it needs to be. Wasteland 2 allows you to design your characters not only for skills but for various different combat styles as well. Sniper rifles, shotguns, SMGs or LMGs all feel nicely different, be it their optimal range, rate of fire or even the type of bullets they require. Melee 2 is a viable option and depending on the combat situation can be the best way to lock down a powerful opponent or be straight up suicidal. The basic mechanics of combat aren't very complex and revolve around taking cover and systematically taking out the highest enemy damage dealers. Combat is completely turn based with the order in which characters act shown at the top of the screen and every character has his own pool of action points based on their attributes. It certainly isn't easy and victory can depend a lot on your preparation, the type of weapons you have and occasionally, though often only during big fights, the positioning you've placed your party in before combat. Combat itself doesn't include any special attacks, beyond using your medic's surgery or healing capabilities on another party member, or equipping and switching to some grenades or rocket launchers when you just need a little bit more firepower. There are a few alternative functions such as the headshot ability, which I think I can count the times I've used it on one hand, the ability to have your party members crouch, which can actually be key to win in combat situations as it increases their chance to hit and evasion rating, or the ambush ability, which allows you to set up little defensive traps. Furthermore, you can switch between your character's two weapons at will, and every time you fire your guns it will cost you ammo, forcing you to eventually reload. Although combat is simple at its core, it remains tense and I always found it enjoyable, with the exception of the bullet spongy mutated insects and animals. Successfully hitting an enemy with a shotgun or sniper rifle is very satisfying and jamming your weapon is painful every single time, making you wish you had solved that problem with your hopefully adequate weaponsmith. Finally, loot and the economy in general is done excellently and fits in well with the game's narrative. Most of the junk loot you find ranges from amusing to unsettling and it will always be useful in some way. Remember when I said you'd have to reload? Well, it turns out ammo isn't cheap in a post-apocalyptic universe and Wasteland 2 does a solid job at balancing your income and immediately expending that income on more ammo. Only when I started the very last few missions did I feel as if I finally had plenty of scrap, the currency and ammunition on me. It is quite pleasant to find yourself balancing your scrap, bullet count and wondering every time whether or not you can afford to salvage a weapon for parts or need to sell it at the first vendor you find. In the end, Wasteland 2 truly is a fantastic game but you won't see that until you've spent roughly 20 hours or so on this sprawling RPG. The game suffers from an archaic user interface and the first half of the game isn't very notable. I'd recommend having one character invest into the outdoors skill because random encounters can easily take off another 20 minutes of your time without really providing much of interest. Plus you will likely find yourself walking away from your screen quite a few times as you wait for your characters to move all the way back on the map. It's a slow, slow game. Yet, Wasteland 2 has so much to offer. The second half of the game is an immediate improvement in quest and map design and features interesting factions and story choices. The second half opens up a lot more, giving you less directed main quests and giving you a good amount of freedom to solve your way through side quests at your own pace. The role-playing aspect of Wasteland 2 is great, designing your specialized characters and seeing how they make their way through a story with real consequences offers a good amount of replay value. If you are patient and give Wasteland 2 the time it needs to show its potential, it will be a tremendously enjoyable experience. It's time definitely worth investing.